Okay, so a couple of you have asked how to take the an object and incorporate it into a program, like it doesn't quite make sense to you. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I have a little program here, and first I'm going to walk through just the object creation, and then I'll show you how I incorporate it into a more fully formed program. All right, so first of all, um, let me comment out all of this down here, which we will get to shortly. And let's just start with our class. So we have um, a class called Pumpkin, and as you'll recall, we have to define um, a way for the object to get created, define what happens when we make a new object out of this class. So I want to set the color of my pumpkin. I am going to set the stem to be true, which actually doesn't mean anything. I just sort of threw that in there, but that's okay. I am setting a, a, an attribute called self.picture equal to something that comes out of this um, built-in method. And I'll show you what that is um, in a minute. You might guess that it's going to be a graphic since the um, method is called draw pumpkin. Then I have self.name, which takes some input from the user, saves it as a string. And then I run um, the function self.drawName. And you'll see what that looks like in just a second. So, um, so what's going to happen is it's going to do these. And the first thing it's going to do is run this method called self.drawPumpkin, which is right here. So we have draw pumpkin. This works just like it would work if it were just hanging out by itself in a program and not inside a class definition. So I set some you know, x, y values, I draw a circle, I draw it to the window, which I, you might have noticed I created in front of the class. And then I um, draw a couple of eyes, I draw a nose, I draw a mouth, I'm returning the circle. So that means that the graphic that's created through this process gets returned and is saved as self.picture up here so that we could get to it later. And you could name that whatever you want. Um, I just happen to name it self.picture. And then here's my draw name. Um, and I actually use the self.picture attribute um, right here, which I'm going to use it again later in my program. But all I need, I'm just using it for a reference point so I know where to draw the name. So I have the center point of the circle that I drew, which is say has been saved to self.picture. So I use self.picture.x, and that gives me the x center self.picture.y gives me the y center. I um, subtract the radius because I'm going to put it above the pumpkin. And then, of course, this will be the string that comes from self.name that we defined above. And then I give it a fill and I draw it on the window. All right, so that's the class definition. So I'm going to uncomment these two lines right here. So all these two lines do, this isn't a full program. All this does is this creates an object, this creates another object out of this class that we just defined. So, and that, that, of course, that's the benefit of defining our own classes, that we can create multiple ones of these without having to write all of this code over and over and over again. We can just change a few things. Um, and right now, the only things that we can change is the color and the name, but you could write this program in a way where, oh, and, and the location is randomized, so that changes the location, but you could write this program in a way that, um, you know, every time you make it, you take inputs of some kind from somewhere that changes a lot of different things about it, but we're creating something relatively simple here. So let's run this and see what it does. All right, so I have a graphics window here and I have an information request window and it wants to know what color I want my pumpkin to be. Well, let's just make it your basic orange. And now it wants to know what uh, its name should be. Let's call it Pumpkin-y. And now you'll notice that it's asking me that same question again. That's because I have another, if you look down here, oh, you can't see it. It's down below that. But I've run, I've created a second object. So another pumpkin is going to appear on the screen. Let's make this pumpkin purple. And let's make this pumpkin be scary. Okay, 
So that's all that does is it, um, if you look down here, pumpkin equals pumpkin, pumpkin two equals pumpkin, and everything that happens is happening inside of this um, class definition that we have up here. So all that really does is not really a full program because all it's really doing is creating a graphic and then nothing else happens. So if you wanna do more, um, which is what I've asked you to do, then you need to write um, some more code. So let's uncomment this right here. Okay, so now I have a couple of functions here that are not inside of the class definition. They're just regular old functions like you're used to, not inside a class definition. But these functions are gonna work with this class that we just created. And the first function actually creates the objects out of the class. So what it does is I've got I've set number equal to you know however much however many um, the person wants to create. I've created an empty list, which you'll see what I'm using that for in just a second. And then I'm taking I have this for i in range number. That's going to take this number up here, and it's going to make as many pumpkins as the person has told it to make. And then it's gonna take every pumpkin that you make and add it to the list. And that's a really common thing to do with objects is that you create a number of them sort of through a looping process of some kind and you save them somewhere in a list or a dictionary, something like that, so that you can then access it later in your program. And the cool thing is is that you then have access not just to that object, but everything that's attached to it, all of its methods, all of its attributes, everything you could possibly want. So you can always find where that object is in this case, because we have X, Y values that we could work with. We know what the object's name is. We know what its color is, all those great things. Um, and I am returning that list because I'm gonna use that list in my next function. So since we're inside of a function, if I wanna access something that I create in here, I need to return it so that I can create, so that I can access it again. So down here, I've got dance party and that takes the list of pumpkins that we create and all it does is move those pumpkins around. So down here, we've got for I in range 20, which is sort of a random amount. Um, for pumpkin and pumpkins, and then I've got pumpkin dot picture. Remember that's the graphic dot move. And remember graphics have this method. So this is a method that's associated with this attribute. Not to get crazy confusing, but that is actually what's happening. So I have access to that information because I stored every pumpkin in this list of pumpkins. So now I can make my pumpkins dance one at a time. And then down here, I just have a little um, program that runs these other functions. So I take input about whether we want to even start this whole process. And then if I say yes, then I create my pumpkins. And this saves the list that comes out of create pumpkins. And I left these variables the same just because there's no reason not to. That way you know what you're doing. You're creating a list of pumpkins. Um, very, very easy. And then I ask if you want the pumpkins to dance, and if you say yes, then we run that other function. And remember, we need the list of pumpkins in order to know where to move those pumpkins on the screen. And then I just print some things to the screen if you say no or type mistype or something along those lines. So let's run this and see what that looks like. Okay, so we've got an information request over here and we've got our graphics window. And our information request is asking us if we want to draw pumpkins. So I'm gonna say yes. And now it wants to know uh, how many pumpkins we want to draw. And so I'm going to say five. And now it's asking me for colors. So let's start with boring. And now it wants to know what its name should be. And now remember we're making another object because I told it to make five. So this is object number one. And now we're gonna make object number two. So it's running through that class definition that you made at the top, or that I made at the top. All right, let's make this one yellow. And let's make this one. Let's make um, blue. I don't remember what all the color names are. 
Um, all right, let's make a green one. And let's finally make a purple one. Okay, now we made all our pumpkins. So that was all, that was a combination of running the create pumpkins function and going through all the things that were in the class. So every, um, every time it created an object, it went through everything in the class, all the functions you told it to run, um, etc. Now we aren't, I didn't make this program in a way that I was going to be running um, methods outside of the class definition, but we could certainly do that, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's make our pumpkins dance. We see, they dance, and I didn't attach the names to them, so they're kind of stuck there. Um, if I had enough time, I'd go back and fix that. So that was a fun little program. So um, one thing that we could have done if we wanted to is we could have created a dance function or something like that in here and we could have done something like this define dance self and then we would have put something like self dot picture or we would have basically done what we did down below for I in range 20 self dot move and we have let's just copy this we did a random integer random random okay and we want to do a win dot step but we have to do it in here we'll do 0 0.025 again so now actually what now that we put that inside there this is just to show you a different way you could do this. So if you say um, yes, so now I don't actually need this function. Um, what I need now is for pumpkin. Well, actually, let's do it this way. There are multiple ways you can do this. So instead of um, writing all this out here, we have it up in our class definition, and now what we can do is do pumpkin.dance, like that. And that's a little cleaner, because all of this is now moved up in here. Now let's see if that actually works. It should. Yes. Here, I'll move everything over so you can see it. Yes. Let's just draw three pumpkins this time. We'll make them. Oh, I made a brown one earlier, and see that looks like red. It's so weird. Um, let's make this one red. Uh, sienna is that a color? Ooh, look, sienna is a color. Cool. Uh, let's make this one cinnamon. Okay, and let's make one yellow. Like yellow looks good okay that'll be sunny all right so we have our three pumpkins and I'm gonna ask them to dance ah and we got an error let's see what our error is pumpkin instance has no attribute move um, and it doesn't because the graphic has it so always good actually to have an error that happens so Remember that move is attached to the graphic, not attached to the object that we created. So we have to attach it appropriately. So let's try that one more time. <clears throat> we'll make a single pumpkin so that it will go fast. Here we go. Yes, let's draw some pumpkins. Let's draw one. Let's make this pumpkin purple. And let's call it star. I don't know why. And let's make it dance. And then this time it should work. Yeah, <clears throat> there it goes. So that was a very, um, we, it's kind of hilarious, actually.
and it's moving off the screen. There we go. So um, that was just a simple way to do it. And then we actually did a little bit of refactoring in that we moved um, some stuff up back up into the class. And, you know, it really didn't make a huge amount of difference in terms of um, the way that it looked. But if it was because this wasn't a lot. But if this had been like 20 lines, you might want to what a lot of people do is put their classes in one file and put the program in another file and then pull the classes in. Um, so it can create cleaner code, but it doesn't necessarily change the functionality at all. All right, so I hope that that helps you in trying to put a program around your objects and um, looking forward to seeing some creative things.